So hello and welcome to everyone. Um, I'm very happy to see you all here. Uh, my name is Helle and I'm the Darlington District Missioner and uh, this is a webinar uh, titled Reach Out to Help Out um, at Time of COVID-19. We've used the word Christmas in here because this is in December so we're kind of approaching Christmas time and Christmas time can be quite challenging actually for quite a few folk. I've invited along Michael Harvey who is the Director of um, National Weekend of Invitation and I've also invited along Sandra, Sue and Debbie who are our current ACORN members in the district and um, they've started this journey back in May when we had the first introductory um, uh, webinar to ACORN and we actually as a group been meeting on Mondays uh, ever since and we've been having some wonderful discussions um, about what God is doing in and in through us. So we will be hearing obviously from Michael, but we'll be also hearing from the ladies. Uh, we'll have a couple of questions for them to explain their experience. There will be a breakout room um, option coming up later where you can go in to a breakout room with one of the ladies from the ACON group and you can ask them questions, but also you can kind of resonate back what this webinar is telling you. Um, what I would like you to do during this webinar really is to think through whether this is something for you, whether this is something that can be used in your setting, whether this is something that you want to learn more and obviously you're more than welcome to um, ask those questions at the end of the webinar. Um, this webinar a, will be posted on uh, the Darlington Methodist District YouTube channel and you can direct your friends to there uh, for information and, and kind of understand what this is. So, Michael, <laughs> I have some questions for you. We're going to begin from there. So, Michael, what are you noticing about what is happening in society as we're getting closer, well, as we enter the season of winter? Well, uh, first of all, thank you ever so much for the opportunity of um, just um, talking about this uh, subject this afternoon. Um, and thank you for thank you for coming along, and thank you for those who are listening later. Um, I think um, due to COVID nineteen, as we're entering this winter, um, never has there been a more important time uh, for Christians to be. Um, in contact with those around them. I, you know, I, I think in our generation, we've never seen, we've never experienced anything like, like this at all. Um, and, and I think after weeks of self-isolation, um, economic disruption, uh, disappointment, anxiety, um, and lots of pressure, um, our neighbours, our friends, our families have been really really impacted you know by um this this pandemic and the the isolation that it's that it's caused and, and i think it's left many many people you know with really really big questions really big questions and i know kind of uh, just recently um the health professionals have identified that there is a um um, as such a thing called long COVID and they've identified that you know kind of you don't just kind of catch it for a four or five days for some people it lasts you know quite a bit longer but I want to suggest to you that this is a different type of long COVID you know a long COVID that has nothing to do with the physical symptoms but actually there's emotional symptoms um, that there, there is mental symptoms you know th there's going to be a long tail with this you know and uh, and, and w it looks as if because of the the massive massive economic disruption you know we've all been cushioned you know right now i, I think it's going to be a massive long uh, tail um with this whole thing so so i think i think you know as we you know are looking at this this particular kind of winter season uh, we can also kind of look at um, a recent survey that said one in four people have um, has suffered significant mental distress over the past uh, six months 
uh, one in four folks, 25% of the UK population have suffered significant mental distress. Now, the government uh, coined very early on uh, the phrase key workers. Um, and we all know who the key workers are, the nurses, the doctors, the supermarket workers, the refuge collectors. But I'm really wondering at this stage of the pandemic, are we not now the key workers? Are we not, you know, kind of the one million Christians across the UK? You know, are, are we not the, the, the people who can almost kind of um, have our own reach out to help out scheme? You know, that it's not eat out to help out, it's reach out to help out. You know, because, um, because I think people just need to be in contact with people who've got hope. Uh, so I think as we're entering uh, winter, um, I think it's gonna be a long winter. You know, maybe not snow and ice, maybe, but a long winter for people of real difficulty. Now's the time, now is the time, Helen. Mm -hmm. So, Michael, so as we as a church move towards Christmas, um, do you think we have entered uh, like an in-between time for from a church perspective? Yeah, I think um, I think that is what I'm coining it anyway, an in-between time. Um, I'm saying that because um, for for some churches, they've not gone back yet to in-person worship. Um, for some churches, um, they're toggling between online and in person. Um, some churches are trying to do both. Um, so that just kind of um, gives us the question, what is church? What is this? You know, what is this that, that we're, we're going through at this moment in time? Um, you know, the, the amazing thing is in seven days, we changed that which would have taken seven years. Seven days, we changed that which would have taken seven years. Actually, no, I'm talking to the Methodists, aren't I? In seven days, we changed that which would have taken 70 years. Sorry, I, the, I, I, there was a zero, a zero kind of that just suddenly kind of came off there. Apologies, you know, kind of got that. I got the maths wrong there. Um, but I mean, can you imagine? I mean, it's unbelievable, folks, you know, that we are having, you know, kind of this experience, you know, we're sat in different parts of the country, you know, different parts of the district, um, you know, talking about in the Christian faith. It's absolutely amazing, amazing, you know, what has actually kind of happened. But we are in between here. You know, we are definitely going to be keeping some of these things, you know, that we've discovered during this time. Um, and it's and it's almost as if, and again, I'm going to be slightly her heretical now. So apologies for that. So for those of you who don't like what I'm going to say now, it's okay, you know, ignore it. But I think, you know, God potentially allowed our church buildings to be closed to let the Christians out, to let us out. Um, and, you know, could it be that at times our, our buildings have become our idols? Um, so, and our worship services become our idols and leadership become our idol. Um, and so, you know, kind of, could it not be that as God, has actually kind of uh, brought us into this situation. You know, we all can play a role and church can be online. You know, where two are gathered in my name, I'm there in the midst. So I think we are in an in-between time and an in-between time where there is real uh, opportunity in the midst of unbelievable difficulty, Helen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, 
what would you say is the role of a Christian um, in this uh, in this pandemic um, and why the title reach out to help out? I mean, you touched on that a little bit, but you want to explain that better? Yeah, well, um, you know, if we go with the idea that God has allowed our buildings to be closed to let the Christians out, um, we've been dispersed into our neighbourhoods, into our communities. Um, and, and it's almost like a kind of return to early church Christianity, um, you know, where, where the church was dispersed. You know, it couldn't meet together in the numbers it was meeting. And so it was dispersed. And, you know, the Acts of the Apostles says, as it was dispersed, you know, the good news was gossiped. You know, good news was, was, take, was taken out. Um, and, and, I, and I think um, we've discovered um, that neighbours are not a theological concept. I couldn't believe in me that we actually had neighbours. You know, I, I just thought, you know, love your neighbour. Oh, that's a really, that's a really great idea. Well, that's a fantastic idea. And so they discovered, actually got neighbours. And uh, would you believe it? They lived on either side of us. And, and how did we discover this? Well, the government forced us out of our homes on a Thursday evening at 8pm. Unbelievable. You know, not only are we uh, in our neighbours, in our communities, we were forced out of our homes. And, 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 and we met our neighbours. Um, but the, the, the truth of the matter is, is, you know, we've discovered locality, our local, you know, and, you know, some Christians have set up WhatsApp groups, um, you know, for their, for their neighbourhoods. Um, and so yeah. the role, I think, is to connect, you know, with those big questions that our neighbours have. Who am I when I'm furloughed? Who am I when I've lost my job? Who am I when I can't see my nearest and dearest? Who am I when I've got an underlying health condition in the midst of a pandemic? Who am I? Massive questions. And, and I think our role is really to actually kind of be in connection, you know, with those big, big uh, questions um, and and I, and I think you know my experience with the Acorn groups not only here in the Darlington district but right across the UK is um, my goodness once you connect with the big questions big things start to happen. Hello. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Michael, for your insights. Uh, that's really helpful. Um, I'm going to now turn our attention to uh, Sandra, Sue and Debbie, and I'm going to ask them some questions because obviously we've been meeting uh, in the ACON uh, groups at uh, one group uh, since May. So, Sandra, could you tell me uh, a little bit about how you got involved in ACON? How, how is it that you, you decided to come and join? Um, well, I saw the video link and I thought, hmm, I'll just go into that and, and hear what, what they have to say. And actually, I found it very interesting. Um, I thought, hmm, I think that's something I would like to do, uh, to connect with others that are like-minded. So that's how I got into it, um, watching that video link, and it just caught my interest. Mm -hmm. uh, what about you, Debbie? I'm just hoping that you can hear me, so let me know if you can't. Um, I suppose similar in a way to Sandra in that I heard Michael interviewed earlier in the year talking about ACORN and it just seemed to make perfect sense to me, everything that he said. Um, and I'm really passionate about reaching out into the community and, and sort of trying to be making the church more relevant to the people around us. So I just thought actually through doing this kind of thing, it just, it was perfect. Mm -hmm. And what about you, uh, Sue? How did you end up on this ACON group? Well, I too signed up for the webinar and heard uh, Michael interviewed. Um, and I was really just feeling my way with it because the word evangelism 
I know it's my responsibility without a doubt, but it's always been quite a scary word. And I just loved this webinar because everything that Michael talked about was so close really to what most of us are doing anyway, but it just seemed to give us a framework somehow to put it on. Uh, and suddenly it wasn't this great big capital E word evangelism. It was getting in touch with people and offering to, to befriend them if, if that's what they needed, offering whatever it was they needed. And it, it just, just seemed to, like Debbie said, make sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so while I have you, what about, uh, would you be able to tell me what's been significant uh, to, you, to you about being part of the ACON group? Um, well, I really look forward to our times together, probably at a time when a lot of us are sort of up to here with Zoom and you think, oh, not another meeting. But it's a great time of um, friendship, fellowship. We've never met each other. That's the funny thing, isn't it? Uh, and hopefully one day we will. I think it's something to do with the accountability, too, that... Um, not that, you, you know, you get your card marked each week and, and everybody says you haven't done very well. Not at all. But it's that lovely supporting feel uh, and knowing that you're going to be taking this thing to share with others. And not just, you know, reporting back about what's happened in my week, but hearing about everybody else. And, and sometimes what somebody else, Debbie or Sandra, might say something and it'll just... You know, a little light will come on in my brain and I'll think, of course, yes, that's something I could do. So I think it's the sharing um, is very important to me. Mm -hmm. yeah. Debbie, what would you say? What's significant about being part of the ACON group? Very much, um, again, the sharing as a group. I don't think in the beginning I'd realised how important it was to be part of a group because I thought, well, yeah, this makes perfect sense and I can do this. Um, but actually, as the, the weeks have gone on, I've just realised how important it is to be not doing it on your own, but actually sharing it with others. And as Sue said, it's that kind of accountability. Um, not that we're in competition with each other. Um, so we're not sort of saying, well, my my thing this week was better than yours or anything like that. It's just, it's so it's such a supportive environment to be able to share. And I think we've all become part of each other's lives really which is is strange in a way because we haven't met and it has only been on zoom but actually I feel that we've grown really close as a group. Yeah. Sandra what would you add? Yes um, I feel like I've made friends there and um, yes we, we support and we encourage each other and we share the stories and we realise that each of us have different missions as well. And that's a really important part. Um, each one so different, um, but each one so important to link together and to strengthen each other. And we do help each other through ups and downs as well. Because and, and, and we found that, that we support each other that way. And we hold each other in prayer and we pray for different people through that. Um, and I was so pleased that I joined. Um, and at first of all, I was a bit scared when my when uh, um, Michael said, go off and, you know, and next week come back with your stories. And I thought, oh, but actually it was no problem at all because I, I learned that if you go to the Lord in prayer, he leads. We don't have to worry about it. He leads. And so... Um, We've always got lots to share. We, we only have to pick out a portion of what we've got to share. And we connect with so many people because we've got ourselves into that routine of doing that each morning, mm. going to the Lord in prayer. Yeah. And Sandra, what would you say to anyone thinking about joining the ACON group? Yes, I would just say, give it a try because um, you will really have a good time meeting up with other people and just sharing experiences. And like we say, learning from each other as well. Um, you might think it's just a little thing, but it's not. We, we pick up on those little things and we think about it and we take it with us as well. And um, I, I would also give it a try and, and you'll be amazed how the Lord does work in your life yeah. and connect with lots of people. That's great. Thank you, Sandra. So what would you say to anybody thinking uh, joining an ACON group? 
Well, I would agree with Sandra, obviously, the, the way we've, we've all hung on in there through all of this time together and get so much from it. Um, it's a real encouragement and a real pleasure. Um, I don't think we've wept together. We've certainly laughed together, but we really do share things. And throughout the week, um, something might happen and I'll just think, oh, yes, you know, let me I'll be talking to everybody about that on Monday morning and it's it's just a lovely connection that we've made and, and we're amazed as Sandra says at the way God has worked through certain situations um, and perhaps perhaps we're becoming less amazed now because we've seen so many marvellous things but yes I, I can't see why you wouldn't give it a try after all if, if you don't enjoy it, you can drop out of it. It's not a lifelong commitment, but I would definitely say go for it. Yeah. And Debbie, what would you add? Oh, it's hard going last because everybody said all the good stuff. Um, I mean, I think I'd sort of echo what Sue and Sandra have both said. Um, and, and really just don't be surprised by God because it's amazing the things that come out of this. And I think maybe at first we were all a bit sort of, as Sandra said, a bit hesitant and wondering what we'd have to report back on. But actually, as time's gone on, you just it is all the little things, really. And you think, gosh, actually, this has happened and that's happened. And I've spoken to this person. And yeah, so just just don't be surprised. And um, while I have you, uh, Debbie, I'm going to go into the final question. Um, what would you say you've learned about God working in and through you? Well, again, I think don't be surprised because amazing things happen. Um, don't be frightened. I think I was a bit fearful to begin with um, because God is always there. Um, and even if what you say isn't particularly well received at the time, I'm a firm believer in sort of sowing seeds and I think often it's sort of further down the line something that you've said will actually have a real impact on somebody so I think those would be my things and just that it's sort of I think as a personal thing you grow much closer to God through something like this yeah thank you what about you Sandra I found that if, if you do sp uh, spend quiet time in prayer with him, he will do the leading. And um, like Debbie says, he usually prepares the people that, that he's leading you to as well. So he's preparing the ground before you even go. Um, and that's the amazing thing I find. That person, usually when you ring them, they say, oh, Sandra, it's lovely to hear from you. And they share the thing that they're worrying about or need prayer for. And I just think, I knew I had to ring that person, you know, mm. so that's where I found God is working there through it. Yeah, absolutely. And so you have some final words. I'm not going to say what they said. Um, <laughs> I remember Michael saying at the original webinar, don't be scared about taking Jesus to your si the situation you're going to, whether it's on the phone or on an email or whatever, because he is already there. And I found that hugely reassuring uh, and I've kept that in mind all the time to think it's OK because Jesus has actually prepared the way here. Um, and the other thing, I mean, I know we say God works in mysterious ways, but he really does his wonders to perform. The other thing is sometimes I think, well, I might, you know, um, log on on a Monday morning and think, well, I haven't got an awful lot to say. And there was only this, this and this. And somebody else within the ACORN group will say, oh, yes, you can see how God's worked through you there. And, and so I might not always be aware of something, but we can support one another and see things going on. So, yeah, it's great. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sue. Um, so, Michael, we've been obviously mentioning the word ACORN um, Quite, um, quite a bit here. Could you tell us a little bit, a little bit more about ACORN? Um, sure, and um, it's so it's so thrilling for me, you know, to hear those stories um, uh, because when I kind of uh, first set this kind of process off, um, it was on the basis that it is so simple. It's so simple, and yet it's. Yet, yet when you start to hear the stories and you start to, um, you know, kind of 
see it happening week in, week out. It's so profound. It's so simple and so profound. And so what I'm about to kind of go through right now is simple, but it's simple, simple not to do as well as simple to do. And I want to appeal to all Methodists in the district. We need a method again. We need a method, you know, and this is a method. It, it, it's, it's, it's a practice. It's, it's a way of life. And, you know, a Methodists are famous for the method. And so, you know, what uh, Debbie, Sandra and Sue have just been rehearsing with us is just the joy of a method you know, the joy of it, you know, and, and so therefore let me take you through the five, the five aspects to it. Each of the letters of the word acorn is one part of the process. So the A of the acorn is ask. So we try to remember to pray each day, Lord, today, is there someone you want me to connect with outside of the church family so lord today is there someone you want me to connect with outside of the church family um, and this is based on jesus saying i only do what i see my father do um, or i need to be about my father's business um, so you know you know wouldn't you want to interview jesus and say do you know like when you said you only do you only do what you see your father father do. You know, we're quite busy. We've got a lot of stuff going on here. What do you mean you only do what you see your father do? So just having that practice of every day, Lord, today, is there someone you want me to connect with outside of the church family? Is a good practice. And then the second letter of Acon is, is the C, which is the call that God will call you god will call you now i cannot promise you um writing on the wall i can't promise you but as i know you're all house proud methodists you might be quite pleased that there's going to be no writing on the wall no no, no. in fact this is the low cost version this is the low cost version you know there's no parting of the red pond in your village either and there's none of that either but God may lay somebody on your heart. God may put somebody on your mind. Um, God, you know, may um, have somebody ring you up. Um, you might be on your daily walk and all of a sudden somebody comes towards you. God has got so many different ways of calling us. But the process helps us with that ask and call, you know, ask and call. And it's sort of kind of gone missing from Christianity. We do say that Christian, Christianity is a relationship. So therefore, in a relationship, you know, there, there must be a conversation, an ongoing conversation. So God will call. So the third letter is the O, which is the obey, which is obey. And um, all we do then is if a name has come into our mind, um, we simply pick up the phone um, or we pick up our video technology because I know some of you have got video technology. I've been told, oh yes, um, either the phone or your video technology and you simply dial the person. You dial them and you, and you simply say to them, how are you? That's it. That's training over everybody three words try and get them in the right order you know you could go you are how um, and they'd have to try and work out what you're really saying but try and go how are you that that might be really helpful how are you and it's based on this this missiologist called vincent donovan who who writes this book called christianity rediscovered and he said we make the mistake as christians of thinking we're taking god with us into any given situation. God is already there. Our, our job is to find out what God is doing and join that conversation. So, so we're almost like God detectives. 
you know, searching out God, you know, um, how are you is a beginning question. It's a beginning question. You know, in, in that first conversation, you don't have to ask any more than that. How are you? It's fine. You know, now, now God may give you another question. God may nudge you to pray with them or pray for them. Um, but Jesus was a great question asker, you know, a really great question asker. Do you know, in the Gospels, Jesus asked 305, or was it 306 questions? It's just slipped my memory. It's one of them anyway. But he was only asked 180. So he asked 305 and he was only asked 180. There may be a clue there somewhere. There may be a clue that questions, you know, are really important, you know, from a mission perspective. So how are you? That's the obey phase. And then, and then normally every week or every second week, we get together and we, um, we report, so that's the fourth letter, the R, the report, we report to one another. Um, the old fashioned word for reports, of course, is testimony. It just doesn't spell acorn, folks. It's a shocker, I know. You know, I've had words with the Lord about it, but apparently it's still not going to be spelling acorn. Um, but listen, as you're all Methodists, um, you all know what, re what a report is. Boy, do you all know what a report is? You've got, probably got it tattooed somewhere on your bodies, the word report. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, so we report to one another and we just tell one another what we think might have happened. Um, and then the final element is the N, which is the notice. Together, you know, as a group, we try and notice what God is doing in us and what God is doing through us. So in summary, really, all Akon is, is a spiritual practice to pray that prayer, Lord, today, is there someone you're nudging me to connect with outside of the church family, and then trying to get those three words in the right order, how are you? There is no notes to this, nothing to learn other than those those two elements. Hello. So um, I'm hoping that the breakout rooms were useful and um, that you were able to ask the questions you needed to and kind of feedback. It would be really good for the audience uh, to hear some of the key things that were discussed. So who would like to contribute? <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> you would need to unmute yourself, Sandra. Mm -hmm. um, well, I found that over the last few years, I needed to um, to get outside the church walls. I felt like restricted within the churches, and I felt God was leading me outside the church walls mm -hmm. um, because there's not a lot of people are able to come to church or want to come to church but there's so many people out there just need a touch from the Lord and I find it much easier to connect with people that way and if you just spend some time like you just start with a hello how are you but you, you are aware that you give some time it's amazing what conversations open up and and how they can let go and just and tell you some things that they're going through. And there are a lot of people going through a lot of things. And that that little, sp that space of time that you give them will just allow that. Mm -hmm. um, and when we went into our breakout rooms, we had a little mini acorn session there. And you know, it was lovely. And we said, mission happens in so many ways. And um, that was lovely and I just felt like it was a, like a little mini acorn session and um, we were bringing someone else there. Margaret came into it and we shared that with Margaret. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's great, thank you. Anyone else? Well, I think as Sandra said, 
it's offering that time to people. We've been going through such strange times. And I think to literally offer an ear, because at the moment you can't even offer a shoulder, <laughs> nobody can touch. But just to know that somebody is listening to your response. And I think maybe we listen better because we're part of this little accountable group. You know, maybe we might have asked the questions before, but we might have been so busy running around fulfilling all of our church duties and our reports that Michael likes so much and all of those things that we do. And in fact, we've had more time to ask the question and then just sit back and, and you know, show that we're interested and really listen. And I think that's been an enormous help and knowing we've got that accountability to come back and share with one another. Thank you. Question I asked that the current ACON group didn't really know whether it was any different or not. I just wonder whether Michael has anything to offer on it is, does it work better because the group didn't know each other to start with? Um, I've so often seen these groups where it's a group of friends who get together. And I just wonder whether there's perhaps some more openness because they haven't yet met face to face. It's just an open question. Well, that, that, yeah, it's a really good question, Bev. And um, um, I, I was just saying kind of uh, before to Hella that um, I've just kind of finished a group um, with eight uh, ladies, uh, as it happens, um, who are part of a home group. Um, and, you know, they know each other really, really well. And, um, and they've been transformed, absolutely transformed uh, through, through the process. Um, you know, perhaps um, it, it's helpful um, to have, at this stage anyway, somebody who's been part of the ACORN process in, in those first three weeks, because then that sets the um, how it works, you know, kind of um, how, for example, the um, um, we try and spot what God is doing in a person and through a person. Um, that's a, that's a really crucial part of this. And I tell you why it's really crucial, Bev, is because in week two, when people come back in week two, normally it, the the report comes back like this. Well, I'm not so sure I did very well. And then they go on and tell the story. And everybody else then jumps in and goes, my goodness, God was all over that, you know, et cetera. And so, you know, setting, you know, kind of the, the you know, the questions and the, the encouragement up to spot what God is doing, you know, um, once it's set up, then it kind of, it runs, it runs itself. Do we have any other questions that Michael is the best person to answer? No, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I mean, I'm hoping that this session has been really useful to you, um, the people who are here present and people who are watching this later. And I hope it's been kind of helped you to understand what is ACORN and, and what benefits actually there are for people who take part in this. Um, I wonder if we could set up another ACORN group um, in our district. Um, I mean, the way we were talking about this earlier with Michael was that perhaps uh, people come and join the existing ACON group and then we can split after a couple of sessions once we've gained the confidence in um, kind of working with the way it's set up. I mean, it's nothing complicated. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, but it is an opportunity for everybody in the group to share. And then at the end of their sharing, we always ask the question, what has uh, God uh, done in or through this person and, and um, usually others are able to answer that one. Um, as you can see, we don't need to be expert evangelists in this whatsoever. Evangelism is actually quite a simple task. <laughs> Just being willing to love your neighbour is enough and it's a very good start. Um, what comes out of this is obviously God at work um, and his will is 
taking place really for people around us that we come in in touch and it's all about relationship building it's all about um gaining confidence in what somebody else is believing and understanding why somebody is having belief um so if you have any questions um or further comments or you want to join uh, please get in touch with me or if you know somebody on here better <laughs> than you know me and you feel more confident getting in touch with them, then that's absolutely fine. Um, eventually we'll kind of connect with one another anyway. Um, but yeah, at this point, I really want to say thank you. Um, thank you to Michael for coming all the way from Manchester. Apparently snow is arriving there. <laughs> and again, this is great how Zoom can bring us all together. And I wanna also say thank you to Debbie and Sandra and Sue for sharing openly about what this has meant to you and what this is. Um, so yeah, so I guess at this point, I can just wish you all happy Christmas. 